So, hello there everyone and welcome, it is Niran here, and today it is time for me to welcome you to episode number 3 of our FIFA 18 AFC Wimbledon Road to Glory career mode. And today, well we've got an action packed one, because we might well be ending the transfer window, it depends if we have the possibility for a vote at the end, otherwise we'll probably leave deadline day till episode number 4. However, we do have 3 games in this one and a hell of a lot of transfer activity to get through. We should be signing certainly one, if not potentially two players in this episode. Games wise though we've got two league games and a cup tie playing Fleetwood Town and Doncaster Rovers in the league and we've got a Carabao Cup tie against Premier League side Huddersfield Town. Already we're going to be playing against top tier opposition in this series and it'll be a massive test. Now if you haven't seen the first two episodes of this series I would highly suggest going and checking them out. There will be a link in the top right of the screen there for you guys to go and take a look at that one. We've made quite a few signings already. A total of three, two permanent and one on loan. Dorzel coming in on loan but then De Silva Lopez and Joel Azoro from Sunderland coming in on permanent deals. One thing I got in the comment section was a suggestion not to buy just young players. I'm going to try and stick to that. I want to try and bring in maybe three players le more, sorry. That comment did get a lot of support, so I know it's something that you guys want to see. Speaking of things you guys wanted to see, I left you guys with the option to vote on whether I should at least enter negotiations with Doncaster Rovers about this man here, Dean Parrott. One of our centre midfielders, uh, one of the younger ones as well, he's 25 but still has the potential to grow I think to roughly 68 or 69 which means he would probably be just about championship quality if we were to get maybe 700,000 pounds out of him I know it seems unrealistic but that would be a ridiculous deal for a 64 rated player you guys almost unanimously 80 to 20 percent voted that I should at least go into negotiations but quite a few Wimbledon fans suggested that it wouldn't be a good idea because he's a fan favorite so I'm going to try and potentially balance the two. I am going to enter negotiations, but we're certainly going to offer, for, we're going to ask for quite a lot of money. And we're going to go with £700,000, £750,000. It's a quarter of a mil above his valuation. But if we were to get that for a 64 rated centre mid, who's 25, I think that would be borderline fraud, quite frankly. So we're going to try it. They're sticking to £480,000. That's actually below his valuation. We're going to submit that as an offer. They're willing to do something, but add a sell-on clause. 560,000? Nah, it's not enough. I know there's probably people thinking you should just accept that, but we've got we've got a player who's almost worth that on the transfer list. I don't see the point. Now, one thing I really wanted to do in this episode was bring this man in on loan. Ezri Konza plays for Charlton Athletic. We're not actually allowed to because he's recently joined. He's only going on loan. We're not trying to buy him, and it doesn't even say on his status that he recently joined, so I don't really understand. One thing I have looked at is this man Man here, Daniel Pudel, 31 years of age, but he's 68 overall. We'd only have to offer 400k for him, which is one of the cheapest centre backs, but his wages are so high 24 and a half grand. We, get, we could get nowhere near that, absolutely nowhere near that. So we've got our first scout report back of this series. Unfortunately, it hasn't really been too fruitful. Three players coming back here Cameron Cox, Owen Robinson, and Taylor King. None of them really are any good. The highest possible potential is 79. That is just nowhere near good enough to warrant actually being promoted. Hopefully we'll have a little bit of spare change left after the transfer window to bring in a second scout. We've drawn our first two games of the season, so we're looking to pick up our first three points or at least stay unbeaten in this one, but it would be nice to win pretty soon. Joel Azora made an instant impact after his signing from Sunderland, scoring within five minutes last time. He starts along with both of our other summer signings so far, De Silva Lopez and Andre Dozel. The overriding issue really at the moment in this series is funds, and that's what you would expect in A Road to Glory. I think we are gonna have to sacrifice uh, I've got multiple plans really for players that I really want to bring in in this series and players that I know you guys really want to see as well. Plenty of people telling me that I should sign Brennan Dickinson from Colchester. Plenty of people saying I should sign Dale Fry from Middlesbrough. We will do those signings but we might just have to be patient because we don't have the funds right now. Still De Silva Lopez. Still De Silva Lopez. That's now through to Joel Azoro. I tried to cut it back for De Silva Lopez again. Probably would have just been better shooting. That was completely my fault. Parrot there into Trotter, now to De Silva Lopez again, just over the bar. 
Potentially that time the square was actually on, Azora was there in support. Down the left hand side here come Fleetwood Town, cutting back there, this is Madden, that's to the edge of the area, good shot there and good save from George Long at his near post, just parrying it past and uh, out for a Fleetwood Town corner. But a quite frustrating game this one because it's just Fleetwood Town just have defended really quite well, like there's not, there's not really much we can do. Here's Devante Cole, that's out to the left there for Hiwula, that's a good ball in, what a save by George Long, Charles clears off the post as well, the save there, oh that's a dodgy pass there from Lyle Taylor, Fleetwood still coming forward out to the left hand side, this is Dempsey, cut back inside, that's a really risky challenge from Florence, I'm having heart palpitations here, back to Dozel again, now Joel, no it's not Joel Azoro, it's the Silver Lopez, now it's Joel Azoro, playing it through there towards Liam Trotter, what a save! From Cairns, that could have been the goal. Oshelaja wins that in the air, now Dozel does as well. Parrot, Dozel, suddenly we're now on the attack. Dozel, that's through now towards Joel Azoro, win it for us, please, what? How on earth has that been saved? No, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, EA, I don't agree with that. I'm sorry, FIFA. It's another draw, it's another nil-nil. We obviously have drawn in all three of our league games now. This time it was due to the goalkeeper being just suspiciously good. Frustrating match there, we've got to leave it in the past. It's time to get into some training. The Silver Lopez and Azoro aren't here because they're gonna grow well on their own. I'm trying to target the training at players that we need to train. Even more of a frustrating game there against Fleetwood Town because we ended up picking up an injury for one of our main men, Lyle Taylor. Though if I'm honest, he hasn't really performed brilliantly so far in this series. He will be out for three weeks with a sprained ankle. Thankfully, the actual games at the moment are sort of secondary to the transfer activity because at the moment we've been quite unlucky with the gameplay we've received. Speaking of transfers though, it is time to move in for another defender, but on loan. We don't, I'm sorry, unless we sell someone, we really don't have the cash to go out and actually buy a centre back, as well as the centre mid that I'm wanting to bring in in this episode. So for now, we're gonna have to try and bring in this man here, Fikeo Tamori. Now, I happen to know his overall, cause I just happen to know it anyway for some reason, which is kinda bad, but I just do know it anyway. He's 64 rated, can play as a right back or a centre back, so he's useful whether we, you know, if even if we change our formation to four at the back. The one thing that I genuinely don't know about this is his wages. Now, they want us to pay 80% of the wages, uh, although it would mean we'd only be paying £1,232, which isn't that much, so clearly his wages are not that high, which is great to see. However, we are still going to counter it, and we're going to drop it down to 65%, which I think is what we did with Andre Dozel, correct me if I'm wrong. Nah, but it will try 60-40. Hull are happy to split Tamori's wages 60-40, but as long as he wants to join, wherever he is, where is he? He's, he's gone. Fikeo Tamori will hopefully be coming in on loan. Now, one player I really, really want to enter negotiations with. I'm not massively hopeful because again as I mentioned earlier I think we're gonna have to sell at least one player to be able to afford this one but Nzuzi Toko I'm gonna put his physical stats on the page on the, on the on the page on the screen I'm gonna put his physical stats on the screen and you can see just why I'd be so excited to have this guy in the side it flips both sides of the coin in terms of realism because he's a slightly older player, which is what you guys wanted. You did want me to buy a player who was slightly older, and I would like to bring in another older player on top of that at some point in this transfer window. However, he's also coming in from Switzerland if he joins, so it's slightly unrealistic in that sense, but we are going to offer Andy Barcham. He's 30 years of age, he's 64 overall, but uh, we're going to offer him in the opposite direction. I know they're going to reject that because they're not the same uh, price of player, but I'm hoping they'd be willing to take him on plus... 410k. Bingo. This is what I was hoping for, okay? This is what I was actually hoping for. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we'll propose a new transfer sum of 300k. We're also going to add on a sell-on fee of like 15%, because the chances are by the time we sell him, we'll have way more money to deal with this anyway. So, transfer fee of 300,000 will advance, then we're going to add a sell-on clause of not quite 15%, but 10%. So 300k plus Andy Barcham and a 10% salon clause, which roughly adds up to 675k. For a 67 rated player who we could train and I'm sure would play a hell of a lot better than a 67 rated player, that seems decent. And St. Garland's rep, so the team from Switzerland, have agreed 
on that deal. The issue is, right, wages. Do we really have the wages to pull that off? Slight mistake really here from me. I'm willing to take the flack on this one because we are going into a massive game against Premier League opposition already here with a slightly tired team. I should have thought about that when we were playing that game against Fleetwood, made some substitutions, just taken the draw, given how important this game is against Huddersfield Town. Oh my word. Round two of the Carabao Cup. Didn't expect to be against Premier League opposition. We've been done dirty, quite frankly, as far as hoping to progress is concerned. Here we go. This is a, a sign, or a, hopefully a little preview of things to come in this series. That's Charles. Now into Dozel. Good turn. A Pyre. A Zoro. Can he play it through there towards Trotter? It's a good save, though, from Rob Green. Really smothered the ball. I don't think it was too much that Trotter could have done there. The uh, Huddersfield goalkeeper was on top of him before he could get there. Good start, though. Had the first chance of the game, really, in this one. Got Trotter there for support. That's through now towards Joel Azoro. He was facing away from goal. First touch didn't really help the Swede out, but he's won a corner from the situation. Once again, we're going to try and swing it in really towards either Trotter or Osha Larger. It's into Osha Larger. Unfortunately, the header was nowhere near. Beautiful stuff there from Adedeji Osha Larger. The Silva Lopez just gets the ball to Quezzi Apaya. And then a lovely reverse ball from Apaya now back to De Silva Lopez with the shot. Should have gone in really. Now falls though to Forrester. Saved by Green. Now into Azoro. Somehow cleared away. Apaya then doesn't win it in the air. That really should I think have been 1-0. Trotter. That's now out wide to Harry Forrester. Lovely run from him. Azoro running in behind. Joel Azoro here. He's got support as well. It's Trotter. Now to De Silva Lopez. It's 1-0 against Huddersfield. Premier League opposition means nothing to AFC Wimbledon as Leonardo De Silva Lopez Lopez gets his first goal in an AFC Wimbledon shirt. It's really well worked. Azoro to Trotter. Trotter could have had the shot himself, actually. Maybe he's impressing any Premier League scouts out here at the moment. He, we are going to get a lot of interest from Premier League clubs for players like this eventually. We're 1-0 up against Premier League opposition. It's Van Lepara. Really good interception from Florence again. He has been so solid in this game. Still Trotter. That's through to Apaya. Now Azoro back to towards Apaya again, but the final pass blocked and Azoro has gone down injured. I pray it's not an actual injury and he's just feigning it to try and get a decision out of the referee because that does happen sometimes on this game. We cannot have Lyle Taylor and Joel Azoro out injured at the same time. Oh, it is actually an injury. Hopefully he runs it off. Ball into the box. Charles should have dealt with a bit better. It'll fall to Teal and it's hit the crossbar. From the promising Dutchman, George Long definitely did not have that one covered. It was a weak clearance from Charles in the first place that caused that. Parrot, Forrester, now through to Azoro. Can he cut that one back? No, he finds out. Pia, great turn on the rebound. Quezzi Apaya makes it two here against Huddersfield Town. And we are in dreamland here against a Premier League side. We are two goals up. Joel Azoro with a simple ball into a pyre. Really nice turn, but a pyre crucially reacts quicker. He's been really good in this game as the Ghanaian, and now he's given us some breathing space as well. 2 0, thanks to that man there, Quezzi Apaya, in the 61st minute. This is huge. This is a huge situation to be in. Already in a position to cause a massive cup upset here. Van Lepar has gone past Florence quite easily. Charles is going to have to come over and cover, and he does expertly. Beautiful challenge. I think we've done enough in this game. We have. The final whistle is blown, and AFC Wimbledon claim their first Premier League scalp of the season series in just episode number three as we knock out Premier League side Huddersfield from the League Cup. Massive upset already in this series. Insane performance from everyone, especially given we were missing one of our main men. But that man there, Quezzi Apaya, stepped in to fill in his shoes, and in the end, we win the game 2-0. That is a huge performance and a huge result. 100% our best performance so far of the series, as Liam Trotter gets man of the match. Can't argue with that. He was absolutely phenomenal, was Trotter, in that game. Him, Parrot, and Dozel were the incredible partnership in that first half, midfield-wise. Quezzi Apaya, Joel Azoro, Leonardo da Silva Lopez, 
Charles, Forrester, Oshalaja, all getting really good ratings and deservingly so. The inbox then is quite the mixed bag after that game. Joel Azoro, we saw him get injured, he sprained his knee. He's out for three weeks, so both of our main strikers are out injured for three weeks at the same time. Lyle Taylor and Joel Azoro both out. Paul Robinson has been sold to Barnet. We get 70k out of that. We just get wages really freed up. That's the main thing out of that deal. Uh, we've also brought in Fikeo Tamori on loan from Hull. Technically a right back, but can also play centre back. And that bolsters our defence just a little bit. He's also quite young, so he should grow. Here is Fikeo Tamori for those that were wondering. He basically comes in as a direct replacement for Paul Robinson. He's 64 rated. Paul Robinson was 64 rated when he left for Barnet. So basically, you know, one in, one out. Tamori, though, is in on loan. Can play as a right back and a centre back. We've got some decent transfer activity going on. We've just brought in a centre back in on loan who is actually going to improve the side. And it is now time to go in for this man here. And Zuzi Toko from the Democratic Republic of Congo, who can play all the way through central midfield, 26 years of age, 67 rated. At the moment, we're making a 300k plus Andy Barcham bid for him. I don't know how much money we're going to have after this. I think it's going to be roughly 200k. One thing I am concerned about is if he's going to want quite a significant pay rise. If he is, the deal's just simply not going to happen. I'm not going to lie to you. We'll have to bring in a player. Contract length, once again, only wants one year. Yep, FIFA really throwing up some surprises there. Uh, we're going to counter it, though, and give him two years because I'm not happy with him having a one-year contract, especially when he's 26 years of age. He's not even old. He wants to have his salary discussed. At the moment, he's on 8,600. So why don't we just offer that again? It sounds, it sounds stupid, but let's just give him... 8,600 for now as a base value. Uh, he wants 7,600 in terms of wages, a slightly higher signing bonus, and a goals bonus of 180k if he scores 15 goals. Signing bonus I'm fine with, goals bonus I'm fine with because he's not going to score 15 goals in a season, I don't care about that. Wait, hang on. That's lower. His weight, that's lower by a- Yep, accept. Alright, sound. I was, for some reason I was thinking that was higher than what he was on already. He's taking a pay cut. What a hero. What an absolute hero. Well, apparently that wipes out our entire transfer budget. Does that really wipe out our entire transfer? Oh, it does. Oh, it's including the goals if he gets the goals bonus, which he's not going to get. You know what? I'm not sure if it's counting Andy Bartram's wages going in the opposite direction. Because that's suggesting... Because we had eight... 1,600 in wages before this deal, but Barcham's obviously not going to be on the book, so surely surely that should be taking into account a 2.5k that Andy Barcham's on and raising it up to like 3.6. We're going to accept, because there's nothing I can do about that, but we're, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that, because I don't want to lose those wages. Those are very important. They can be, you know, put into something else. Regardless of that, though, Nzuzi Toko, then, is going to become our third permanent signing of this series. We have brought in a slightly older player. I know he's not, you know, close to his 30s, like I think some people were expecting him to do, but it's still a pretty decent signing nonetheless. So here he is, Nzuzi Toko, the man just in from St. Garland, and you can see in terms of attributes, look at that wheel, 91 pace, 78 physical, 70 dribbling, his passing is lacking, so we might even try and train that even though he's 26 years of age. He is going to be, don't worry, our one and only signing from actual abroad. Uh, because it just doesn't happen that often in real life for a League One side. But this was a very interesting one. I think I feel like he's a hidden gem. I feel like he's a real hidden gem. So it seems as though we've been frauded here. I'm sure people probably... I just didn't know this was a thing. But you can clearly see that the fact that we've got Andy Bartram off the books hasn't changed our wage budget. We should have received 2.5k back. We haven't. We simply just haven't. We now go into the final game of today's episode. Now, you guys voted that I should actually sim one game per episode, but in this instance, the first game of the episode was really boring, and, it, you know, it's not going to stop me from doing the third game, so I'm just going to play this one, and you can get some extra gameplay. As you can see, confirmation there that it's a player debut for Fikeo Tomori, who takes on the number six that was left behind by Robinson. That's into Whiteman, who's taken down by Dozel. Should have been a pen. We've got away with one massively there. That absolutely should have been a penalty. I'm really not in 
entirely sure how it isn't. Forrester back to Quezia Pyre again. Really nice run then from the Garnea, who now cuts inside. Quezia Pyre saved though by Lawler between the Doncaster sticks. Didn't quite get the power on it there, did Quezia Pyre. Oh, Charles has given that away in a really bad position. This is Coppinger. Decent shot, but a little bit wild from him. Dozel. Now to Quezia Pyre. Still Quezia Pyre. Really decent shot, but saved by Lawler and turned out for a corner. Still McDonald. Now Forrester again. That's through now towards a Pyre. Still a Pyre. Out wide now towards Forrester. Can he play it to the back post? He can. It's to Silver and it's 1 0 right at the end of the first half. We've finally got a goal in League One. My word, I didn't think it would take this long. And it's such a simple goal as well. De Silva Lopez gets his second goal of the episode. If you're wondering why I'm not throwing my arms around, it's more out of relief that we've actually got a goal. It's been like drawing blood from a stone. We've actually finally got some action in the league. Here though is Trotter. There's a ball through there for Quezia Pyre to make it two. Great block though from right, because I think it was past the goalkeeper. Really good work from the Doncaster defender to get back there. Otherwise, it would have been 2-0. Playing this one about quite slowly, but now into Marquise, who's taken down actually. Row there goes past the challenge. It's into a very dangerous position and Blair equalizes. Maybe it's just written. Maybe we're just going to draw every single game of this series, quite frankly. So we're back at square one again. We could have been two goals up had it not been for some really good defending, in fairness, from Doncaster. But instead, we now find ourselves level again as we have been seemingly for 100% of this series so far. Good interception there and Toko has managed to find a pyre. Cody McDonald's running in behind. This is a chance for Cody McDonald to win it for us and he potentially has with four minutes of the game to go. We take the lead and Cody McDonald in to replace the injured Lyle Taylor and Joel Azoro gets the goal. Really poor mistake from Doncaster. I think it's Nzuzi Toko who won it back. Played it down for a pyre who then waits calmly for the run of Cody McDonald and he smashes it past the Doncaster goalkeeper. If the goalie had saved that, I genuinely would have thrown my TV out of the window. But thankfully, we don't get the bad look like we did in the first game. And now, we just need to hold on. We've actually finally won a league game, ladies and gentlemen. We've actually seen a goal as well. And unsurprisingly, they're two of the best performers in the side. But it's actually Quezia Pyre who gets man of the match. Dozel and Trotter with good ratings. Tamori as well with an 8.3. Though, in my opinion, he was actually one of the shakier centre-backs in that game. Maybe it was because of his debut and the MK Dons lost. It's just a beautiful day. And finally, just a little bit more training. We're going to start training Joel Azoro actually when he comes back from his injury because his finishing is lacking a little bit in terms of that attribute. But for now, Osha Larger, George Long, Florence and Civic are still being trained. Civic very close now to going up to 57. Here's the table then after four league games of this season. After a pretty slow start and three draws in a row, we now find ourselves 10th in the league on at six points after that win there uh, against who do we even I've forgotten who we played Doncaster there we go I knew I'd, I'd see them when I saw their name that makes that makes no sense uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna move on anyway that's gonna wrap things up for today's video I hope you have enjoyed next time we'll be finishing up the transfer window and going through deadline day though at the moment we have, well, we have no money. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. We have no money. So it's going to rely on us selling Tom Saws, uh, realistically, if we are to bring in anyone in this transfer window or the remainder of it anyway. If you do want me to sign a player that is very cheap indeed, <laughs> I'm going to say about 200k or less, then drop them down in the comments section. Because if we do sell Tom Saws, that may well happen. But I think for now, unfortunately, we may not get any more deals done just purely because we've been we've been sacked over a little bit, I think, by this whole Andy Barcham thing. Anyway, forget about that. I hope you've enjoyed this particular video. If you have, slap a like on it and subscribe if you are new to the channel. Comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. And once again, Wimbledon fans, feel free to direct me through this series in terms of things that I should and shouldn't do. I know a couple of people have been asking me to change the formation. I'm really comfortable with this formation, but if it's and it, and it gives me my best players in the side because our fullbacks are particularly weak. But if it's really, really something that's offensive and you want me to go to four at the back, then let me know and I'll experiment with it at least and we'll see what the results are like. 
comparing three at the back to four at the back. Anyway, you can also follow me on social media. My Twitter handle is at the official FNG. Links to that are down below. My Instagram is exactly the same, so go follow me over there too. But it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye. Yo, massive pills. I roll out with some monsters. Looks like your team and you watch us. I do no roll with imposters. Time by the man in the Oscars. I'm drunk of Henry and Foster's. I have a career, I am jobless. This bitch you f me so hard. I might just end up unconscious. I like girls in lingerie. Especially if it is crushes. Bitch, I am the bigger picture. There is no way you can crop us.